What is going on everyone? Welcome back to another run here in American Truck Simulator. Today in the Tom Dooley T680 Enhanced T880 Truck Mod. And this is one that I have been periodically checking in on over on the SCS forums. And he's been taking his time with it and obviously the 579 probably maybe had higher priority. I don't know. But he's finally released this one and the link will obviously of course be down in the description but if you see this thing anywhere else i would be cautious of it i don't know if he has uploaded it anywhere else but just use the link and because that means it's guaranteed or go to the scs forum and download it from there because that means it's pretty much guaranteed to use his share mods link and that is a major sticking point for him that is one thing he is has always been annoyed with concerned with what have you um so yeah just use the link down below for ats mods that lt that way you ensure it is his truck his mod and no one has jacked with it in any sort of way so it's been a while since we had a good t880 we've had uh, one in the past not sure if that one still works or not but this one has a boatload of options for it It'll keep you busy figuring out what kind of cab configuration, what kind of chassis, you know, everything else. Headache racks. Uh, obviously, I'm using the Alcoa rim pack here for the the Alcoa rims. But whether it's the grill insert or the bumper or uh, the, the stacks, you know, lots of options here to choose from. So he did a beautiful job on this thing. Looks just magnificent. So... I don't know what else I can say about it. I mean, you guys see it yourself. It looks beautiful. Well worth the download and putting in your garage for sure. So let's get rolling here. Got a load of pipe heading, leaving the uh, Beezer home location here in Bakersfield, heading out the Flagstaff. And 41,000 pounds of stone is what I've got on. And it'll provide a nice long conversation today about a whole slew of things that I have uh, noticed, I have seen, just wow, a lot of stuff to talk about, and we'll see if my voice will hold up for it today. You guys might have noticed already, I sound a little different, uh, just dealing with the cold. It came in Wednesday night, Thursday morning, somewhere in that area, and uh, it started out as a chest cold, and finally Friday it started moving to the head. And I wake up, I'm recording this Saturday morning for you guys, and yeah, it's uh, completely into my nose, into my head, popping Advils, popping cold meds, Mucinex, all that stuff, so not, uh, not fun, but hopefully the energy comes back, because that is the main thing that has been killing me here, was the throat and the energy were just, was just gone, and so... Uh, canceled my streams, um, didn't do any videos, I came home from work, uh, just sat on the couch for a little bit, and then ended up going to bed at like 9 o'clock every night, um, just trying to get sleep, and uh, you know, that kind of helped a little bit, but still I was just dead tired. Um, so the season is upon us, not just the holiday season with uh halloween and thanksgiving and christmas but yeah the cold season the cold and flu season is here and it has hit me early hopefully this is not a sign of what is to come this year but you never know you never know how it's all going to turn out until all of a sudden you're hugging the toilet or whatever or the garbage can or whatever you guys use and i know when we were kids we had what we called the puke pan puke pan it was a old, old pan, and uh, we would just lay on the couch or lay in bed, and we would have that with us instead of the garbage can or something like that, because my mom knew we probably weren't going to make it to the toilet anyway, so we have what we called the puke pan, but hopefully I do not have to use that this year. I am not a fan of puking, really, really not. I don't think there really is anyone who is a fan of puking, but it happens. It happens. It is a fact of life. But, uh... Hopefully you guys are able to uh, avoid a lot of this this year. It is not fun. 
I'm going to be struggling here until this really clears up. We were going to be seeing Thor Ragnarok today. Um, the wife decided, you know what, let's hold off because, well, obviously you're not feeling all that great. Your ears are plugged up. She says, I don't need you to be in there hacking away and or sniffling every 30 seconds. And I agreed. We'll wait. We'll go next weekend. So I didn't say what was underneath the hood of this thing. It is a Cummins ISX 500 horsepower engine. Of course, bolted up to a 13-speed tranny, which is my normal running transmission I go with. Now, I did not look at the T680, so I don't know how enhanced it is. Um, one thing I did disable just for the hell of it, I did disable the SCS Extra Parts mod from Pedragon. It is one that I always have activated. Um, so if you guys have anything like that act, turned on, deactivate it, just in case. I mean, it, Or if you want to leave it on, go ahead, but if you get a crash, that might be why. So make sure you deactivate it, just in case there's any issues, you know, any kind of conflicts, because 99% of the time when people message me or leave comments saying, my ATS won't work, help, I, you know, right off the bat, well, what, you know, what are you trying to do? The chances are, it's a mod conflict. Go find it. Well, which ones? I don't know. I don't, I'm not you. I don't have all the mods you have. I don't, I, I'm not at your computer, so I can't tell you. So, yeah, it's a mod conflict, guys. Work yourself backwards. Take out the most recent mod and go from there. What was your most recent mod? Well, I put in a trailer mod. Okay, well, Chances are there's something else that's conflicting with it. So, I, 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 I get that question more often than not. And, you know, I, there's nothing I can really help you guys with when it comes to that. Is It's a mod conflict. That is the number one issue that we have with this game. Number two would be they're using a mod from, like, you know, 1.1 and they're trying to use it here so you know out of date mods many of them I don't think will work so oh damn dude why are you slowing down So, and those of you who are seeing me for the first time here, you're new to the game or whatever, just keep that in mind. You know, if you haven't been around long enough to know, you know, 1.28 actually came after 1.6. They rolled the version numbers back. So, you know, it's going to be a little confusing for those who are looking at mods and it says compatible with 1.1 or compatible with... Oops, no, I didn't want to do that. There we go. Uh think I had another gear there, I don't know why. Uh, you know, or seeing it's compatible with 1.3, and well, wait a minute, we're on 1.2, you know, 1.28, it should work, but no, it won't, because SCS jacked with a lot of that stuff. Alright, so, what else, what else, what else? Uh, if you guys are in the Midwest, uh, maybe it might be in other areas of the U.S. as well. Gas prices, holy crap, they're jumping up. They're jumping up pretty good. And here in the Midwest, that's uh, for a couple different reasons. Three of them, actually. First one is refineries. They put off, especially the ones down in Texas, put off their, their maintenance. Now, that isn't going to really affect those of us here in the Midwest too much, but... It kind of does, because, and two of the reasons are kind of tied together here. The refineries down in Texas, they put off their maintenance because of the Hurricane Harvey. 
now Harvey's gone, repairs are done, time to go ahead and do their maintenance, do the repairs to the refinery that they put off. And apparently they decided to go ahead and do them all at the same damn time. So, yeah, that was real smart, right? So, we've got that issue. We've also got the issue of low supplies. Because of the Hurricane Harvey, because of, uh, uh, what was it, Hurricane that went through Florida, I don't remember off the top of my head, because of that one, and because of the tropical storm that, or whatever it was, over in the East Coast recently, we've had to send out, you know, Midwest here sent out a lot of their fuel supplies, a lot of their reserves to help supplement the fuel down in those areas, because obviously the refineries were offline. So, we lowered our own inventories here to help out other areas. That in turn lowered our inventories and to the point where, okay, they're starting to get a little cautious about how much we have left. Now with the refineries down in Texas being offline for maintenance, they can't really pay back what we need. So, of course, there's the whole supply and demand part of that. But more importantly here in the Midwest, there's a major oil pipeline that's down. It carries 700,000 gallons a day of oil. Now, by the time you guys are watching this, maybe it's been fixed. They were expecting it to be fixed right around today. Um, but it's not going to be, you know, okay, back to normal within hours. It takes a long time for the oil to make its way through there. And on top of that, they have to make sure everything's on the up and up. The leak isn't going to happen again. That the fix is done correctly and so on and so forth. So... It's still going to be another week or two before the refineries up here in the Midwest, BP Whiting over in Indiana, uh, the Sitco over in the southwest suburbs, or the Mobile over uh, in the south suburbs, south side Joliet. You know, the refineries up around this area actually start seeing oil. Um, you know, they're still seeing oil as it is. They're getting oil from all over the place. But this was a major pipeline that came through with oil with, seven, like I said, 700,000 gallons a day. That's that's a lot, and you know that that hurts. You don't have it anymore, so you know that that definitely uh, puts a puts a crimp in production, all because of a leak. And basically, what the pipe I have on the back of the truck right here is about the size that you would use for an oil pipeline or a gas pipeline, and they would normally be specially coated. Then they'll it's a rust inhibitor uh, paint job that's on there, so you know they're not going to be the stock, you know, bare steel that you see here. Um, but pipelines like this, yeah, they're only buried a few feet below the ground. And they, uh, you know, they last a long time. They, they do, because they, they are taken care of. They, they are monitored. Jeez, uh, come on, dude. They are monitored. They are, uh, you know, repaired when needed. So, I mean, it's not like leaks happen all the time, uh, which is a good thing. It really is. But, uh, you know, it does happen. And there are companies and crews that, you know, are out there within hours already digging up the ground, getting to the leak. And I used to work for one of those companies that did all that. And, you know, it's a 24-hour day operation. There is no rest. There is, okay, it's Saturday, let's go, let's go home. Nope. You're there for another 12 hours, fool. So, and, and the oil companies that own the pipeline, you know, they're, they're not, they're, they're the same way. You know, it's, it's not, you know, okay, it's Christmas Eve, let's all go home. Nope. You're here, you're working. We gotta get this done. So, uh, it's an all hands on deck. Don't, unless you're dying, you're gonna be there. No ifs, ands, or buts. And most of the time you would be anyway, because that's money. That's money, man. But the company, like the company I worked for, they want you there because, you know, you're going to sit there. It's going to be a hurry up and wait kind of thing. And you're going to get there and it's like, all right, now I'm going to sit here for five hours. Why did I, why, why did you hurry me? You know, why? Well, the company can go ahead and start billing that oil company or the pipeline company the minute, the second, you get onto the site. They don't care what you do. You can sit there for 8 hours, 10 hours, 12 hours. They don't care. But they're billing that pipeline for you. Just to sit there. 
So it, it, it's it's funny how it all works out, but you know that's just how these companies go. And it doesn't have to be an oil emergency response company like this. It could be you know whatever company, uh, construction or whatever. You know they're gonna bill you from when they're gonna bill someone from when you get on the site. It doesn't matter if you're sitting there picking your nose and scratching your butt or actually working. So it, it's. And it, you know, companies like these pipeline companies, they don't, they're fine with that. And they're, you know, Enbridge, for example, the largest pipeline company in the United States, most of the oil that goes, uh, you know, across the United States goes through an Enbridge pipe at some point. And, uh, you know, they'll blank check everything. They don't care. They'll make it all back. It's fine. But... Yeah, usually if there's a, a jack up in prices... Unless uh, you guys are in a part of the country that, you know, uses special blends. Like here in the Midwest, we have to use a, a, uh, a blend of, of gas that's, um, you know, it is a little more intensive on the refineries because it's the low emissions kind of gas. Um, you know, that will jack up the price for us. But if... Uh, Hey, you guys notice a big price? I mean, here we're looking at uh, uh, some areas probably a fifty cent increase. So, um, I didn't turn my lights on either. Oops. The uh, you know usually it's going to be some kind of major issue going on. You know, something bad happens somewhere with the pipeline or with the refinery, and you know a lot of times to me in my opinion it's a knee-jerk reaction oh the supplies are low yeah but you're not even below 50% I don't want to hear it dude you know they worry about the supplies but wait a minute you're still you know you're still pretty stacked when it comes to your supplies you're not gonna run out anytime soon well no we're not then why the hell are you jacking it up so much you know I do hate that aspect of it it's like they're, you know, they raise it up, you know, hoping that people aren't going to buy as much. The fool, people still got to get to work, dude. I never did understand that whole aspect of it. I don't see the point. Let's raise the price on something, kind of deter people from buying it, and... Yeah, no, well, I'm, I'm going to take a week off because you guys jacked it up by 50, 60 cents? Yeah, no. Come on, you're in gear, let's go. Now, I've been seeing a lot of these T880s, and a lot of the times they are workhorse trucks. Here where I'm at in the Chicagoland area, I would say for every 10 880s I see, eight of them are workhorse trucks like this one here. Construction company, uh, the local garbage hauler, MBI, they do... They have, they've been switching over to 880s. Um, I would say one or two have been long haul over the road. But uh, yeah, the, the vast majority of them are, uh, you know, cement trucks, uh, cement companies, construction companies, you know, workhorse trucks, day cabs, work trucks. So... And I, 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 I don't know. I haven't looked at any information from Kenworth. I don't know if they build it to be that way. You know, if, if they're pushing the truck to be, you know, the workhorse truck. But, you know, judging by the looks. Yeah. To me, that, that's a workhorse truck. Ooh, almost hit that cop. And I'm speeding, too. Hee, hee, hee. Alright, sorry, Popo. You can go. Did I make you spill your coffee?
Eh, he needs a new car anyway. Crown Vicks are old. So one other thing I'm going to talk about here, and I'm going to try not to go all salty casket on you guys again, but many of you guys have seen the salty casket video, and you know I'm ranting, or not the salty casket, the rant on SCS video, and oh boy, <laughs> I, I had a feeling, and this is about a week ago. I had a feeling that something had happened where it got shared somewhere and hence that would explain why I had the explosion in comments as well as uh, the explosion in downvotes. Someone decided to go ahead and share that video to the SCS forums and holy crap did the core fan base of the game that you know ATS SCS can do no wrong did they react writing novels I mean it was just you know I can't say I expected it or didn't expect it I really didn't care to be honest but It, it once again shown to me that people don't always watch the whole video, but they're going to go ahead and react and put their own spin on it anyway because they feel like I have offended them somehow. I don't know. The, I mean, right off the bat, I, I, I already have an idea what, you know, what happened. So I go to the SCS forum page. And right away, there it is. This guy doesn't like ATS or SCS. I don't think I said I don't like ATS or SCS. You know, there was a couple of things that were mentioned in the comments uh, both there and on my video that you know I never said that you know I never mentioned I don't remember mentioning mentioning advanced coupling but apparently I did because of, oh well ATS and ETS got it at the same time I don't care you know then it was bragging oh well you know you, we got new signs and we took out the guardrails and that was my idea and you know, we got this, and I don't give a shit about your guardrails or your signs or any of your other crap like that. That's little stuff. That's don't care. Well, they're based in Europe, and they they've been here. They've already visited here multiple times already. You know what? Did they have bags over their eyes, over their heads, so they couldn't see anything? You know what? We got turn signal lights, and it was our idea, and they listened to the people on your forums. And so now we're hoping, we're hoping that we're going to get state flag paint jobs and state flags. That would be just awesome. Shut the hell up. If I could smack you in the back of the head right now for saying that, I would. Just slap you. State flags. Really? There is nothing else that you would like more to have in this game but state flags. Wow. Wow. This game is screwed. If SCS is going to be listening to dweebs like that, fanboys like that, 
This game is screwed. Holy crap, man. Hey, you know, and the funny thing is, is, you know, me and the crew, and Mr. Moose, and, you know, others, we're, we're always making, you know, they, apparently these boys here, they loved the paint jobs that SCS released. The Halloween, the Christmas, and all that. They thought it was just the bee's knees. Yes, sir. We're always making fun of that crap. You know, and, it, and it, for some time, you know, for people like that, though, you can't argue with them. You know, I brought up, I, I, I went through all DLC that was released for ETS 2 since ATS was released. Not a day before. But, in the comments, that was all ignored. He's comparing ATS to a game that's been out for four years. Of course it's going to have more DLC. I didn't compare it to the whole four years that ETS has been out. Did you guys even pay attention? No, you didn't. You're just making another knee-jerk reaction to, to defend the game that has been lacking. Yeah, oh. I mean, I could go on and on just blasting these guys and how moron, you know, how, how much of a moron they are, but... You know, and then there's another one. Oh, he just did entitled cry baby put your big boy bridges on and get you don't play the game anymore shut up just shut the hell up call me a cry baby linking me putting me in the same group of people that were on Facebook link begging just shut your fucking face wannabe uh, it's just Every game's gonna have that, though. Every game is gonna have the fanboys. You know, the core base that no matter what happens, what a company does to a game, they can do no wrong. I mean, hell, this week. Uh, no, last week, I'm sorry. You know, SCS, three big announcements. Um, you know, one was about New Mexico. And then they put out another blog about the, uh, Italy. And then they also had the other one about the, basically, Heavy Hall Part 2. And, you know, I, oh, yay, yay, yay. Not a mention, not one freaking word about ATS. Oh, but ATS is getting two new trailers. That's it. That's it, huh? Okay. And you guys are happy about that, huh? Okay. I just want to slap your ass. I just want to smack you, punch you, kick you, do something. Ugh. I mean, really? Really? And then they want to say ATS isn't dead. It isn't dying. No, it's not dead. It's still on the vine to get squeezed and melt here and there. I mean, don't get me wrong, it is a fun game. But, you know, it, it, whatever. Everyone gets bored of it. New Mexico, it's gonna, you know, bring back its heartbeat for a little bit. 11.99, it was just announced for New Mexico. Coming out on November 9th. So, you know, there's that. We'll drive it for a day and then be bored with it again. Oh, we haul our milk? Milk trailer. Ooh, boy. I don't know. Basically, everything I said, majority of them hated, disagreed with. You know, whatever. I just, I, you know, I sat there and I'm thinking, okay, well, you know, the fanboys spoke, and it wasn't very loud. 200 plus likes compared to their, you know, 18 dislikes. 
or whatever it is now. I haven't looked. It is what it is. But I'll have a video out for you guys for New Mexico. I might even live stream it. Give away a couple copies. But what do you... Before New Mexico comes out, you guys will be seeing this video. What do you think? Eleven ninety nine. Twelve bucks for the DLC. You guys getting in on that, or are you going to say pass? Thanks, but no thanks. What's your guys' thought on that? sharper than I thought it'd be or else I was going faster than I thought it was. Oh yeah, let me know down below what you guys think. I don't know, I think 1199 is almost on spot. You know, there were people saying, "Oh, well, it needs to be it needs to be free because we waited so long." The other comment that just got me rolling was, "ATS was an experiment. SCS wasn't sure if if American or even Europeans were going to want to drive American trucks." Wait, what? So we're basically paying for a Kickstarter. Is that what you're telling me? We paid money for a... Oh, you're a child molester van idiot. We paid money for a Kickstarter project, which is still, you know, in a Kickstarter project. Because we're still not seeing really much from it. Oh, hey, were these streetlights your, guy, your guy's idea too? We know that there's a street light on top of that, that stoplight. Is that your idea, too? Anyway, the, uh, the whole thing is just laughable. Yeah, I'm sorry. SCS knows where their fan base is. You know, they're not idiots. They see where people are buying these things from. They see the forums. They know, you know, how popular 18 Wheels was. But do they close their eyes to the fact the amount of American truck and trailers are for ETS2? The amount of YouTube videos that are put out there of Americans playing ETS2? Driving a Peterbilt? You know, I... I I, I really just don't buy that. I don't. And I don't I, I honestly don't think anyone else should. SCS didn't know it was an experiment. Get the hell out of here with that crap. Stop pro stop protecting them. Let's call a spade a spade, shall we? They're not sure if their European people are going to enjoy the game or not. They're not worried about us. But, that is it for now, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the conversation. Hopefully you enjoyed the truck, too. Make sure you check that link down below for that, as well as the concurrent mods list. And that is it for now. So, I'll see you guys back here maybe in a couple days for, uh... Yeah, for some New Mexico single-player driving. Make sure you follow over on Twitch and uh, Facebook and Twitter for any announcements of that because I'm not going to do a video for it and I'm not going to bring it over so that is it thank you guys take it easy